Praise the Lord, everybody. Let's stand tonight. Wednesday night means church night. Wednesday night means praise night. Wednesday night means glory night. Wednesday night means anything can happen in the presence of God. I'm glad to be in the presence of God. I just feel like God was waiting on us before we even got here. Scripture says, O God, thou art terrible or awesome of thy holy places. The God of Israel is he that giveth strength and power unto his people. Blessed be God. If God was here before we got here, that means he's waiting on you. Now, God didn't come here. God's not waiting to resist you. God's waiting to receive you. He's waiting to receive your praises. He's waiting to be lifted up. The Bible says he strengthens us. Now, I know a typical Wednesday night, everybody's been busy all day long. They've been working. Today was the first day of, of class and school for Jackson County, so I know that our our teachers and school workers, they've been probably through the mill today. But the Bible says he strengthens us. The word giveth means he trades our weakness for his strength. Don't ever think that you're too weak to come before God. Don't ever think that you've given, you, you've just given too much to come before God. Don't ever, don't ever believe that, that there is something that will keep you away from the presence of God because God said, if you'll come, I'll trade your weakness for my strength. I'll give you my strength. I'll put my strength upon you. Why don't we start this service tonight with lifting up the Lord with lifted hands. Let's raise our hands to God. Let's raise a shout of praise to the Lord. We worship you. God, we worship you. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, blessed be the Lord. God, I give you all the praise. I magnify you, Lord Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Fill this house with your glory. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah.
at 7.30. This started in prayer meeting because we had a prayer meeting tonight. We had a prayer meeting tonight. Hallelujah. My, my. Hallelujah. We're going to go pray again because we believe in prayer. Amen. As we pray tonight, continue to pray for Sister Massey. She is still in the ICU unit at uh, CAMC in Charleston, but she's doing better. She's showing improvement. So your prayers are being answered. Your prayers are being answered. When I believe it was Sister Tina and Sister Pam that were going to visit, and that's where all the families at. They're all at the hospital right now with her. The uh, They went in, and of course, they're only limiting visitors to two. And they told him, they said, well, there's two of you, and there's already one person up there. Well, they couldn't figure out what in the world that was because there was nobody else. They'd already communicated with all the family, and none of the family was coming. And so they couldn't figure out what that was. So finally, they let them go up, and when they went up there, they said, who was with you? And she said, I don't think anybody was with me. I said, no, there wasn't anybody in here. There hadn't been anybody in but the nurses and the doctors. He said, they said there was somebody here. And she said, no, there wasn't anybody here that I know of. And all of a sudden, things began to change. All of a sudden, her vitals began to change. And all of a sudden, the report began to change. Because we know somebody was there. Hallelujah. Thank you for praying. Thank you for praying. Because your prayers are making a difference. Continue to pray for Sister Massey, that God continue to touch her and to bring out. She told me, she said, I cannot wait to get back to church. They have not been able to be in church since before March of last year. And uh, they are missing it so bad. And so let's pray that they can get back here quickly and back to church. Let's pray for Sister Robin's mother, that God will touch her. She goes to the doctor tomorrow. Uh, and uh, let's pray that uh, when she talks to the doctor, the doctor gives her some good counsel and some direction, but let's most of all pray that God touch her in her body, and most of all, God touch her in her soul. Hallelujah. I talked to her about baptism the other day, and she assures me she's been baptized in Jesus' name. I can only go by what she says. So I believe she was baptized in Jesus' name, but now she needs the Holy Ghost. So uh, that's going to take a little more effort. So let's pray that God open her heart to receiving the Holy Ghost, that God would deal with her. Uh, there's several names on the request. Uh, Christy Matheny, that's who Sister Pettit requested prayer for in prayer meeting tonight. Let's pray for her. Uh, David Rhodes, that is uh, Jack and Arlene's son, David. Okay, let's pray for him. Uh, Brother Brent, Sister Duncan, in need of healing. Uh, others on an unspoken and, of course, on salvation. We want to take them all before God. How about you? Prayer need tonight. You just want to lift your hand up and God says, I know. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's take it to the Lord. Let's believe God tonight to minister to this need. And one thing that was mentioned, uh, Brother Norman mentioned in prayer meeting, is uh, they have already said that they're going to, going to be killing, is that right, several missionaries in Afghanistan this uh, tomorrow, is that tomorrow, so we need to pray, we've got churches there, folks, you got brothers and sisters in the Lord in Afghanistan, 
who, have, who believe the same thing you believe. Worship the same God you worship. So we need to pray God's hedge about them. That God intervene and protect our churches over there. And that in the midst of every, all the mess that's going on, that God give revival in Afghanistan. God can do that. God can do that. So let's pray that God will do that. Pray for this service tonight, that God will order this service and direct every part of it. Let's pray together. God, in your mighty name, Lord, we pray tonight as we come before you, humbly into the throne room of grace, but boldly before the throne of God. And Lord, we come before you, Lord, in the name of Jesus, believing you, God, for we've seen your hand. We have felt your presence, and we have read your word. And your word has promised us, God, that whatsoever we ask in your name, it shall be done. We pray tonight in the name of the Lord. I pray for Libby, God. I pray you touch her in her body. Relieve her from the pain that she's in. But most of all, God, open her heart to truth. Open her heart to the Holy Ghost, to the things of God, I pray, in the name of Jesus. Lord, I ask you, God, to minister and to touch God, Christy. Lord, you're able, Lord, to touch her. I pray for Trey, God, that Tristan, that you touch him. Lord, let your hand be upon that young boy in the name of the Lord. You're able, God, by great power to minister healing into his body, and we pray it in Jesus' name. Let your hand be upon those, God, every hand that was raised in this sanctuary, every knee tonight, God. I pray over our brothers and sisters. I pray over the church in Afghanistan, and I plead the blood. I pray a hedge of protection. Lord, I pray you dispatch angels, warring angels, to defend your people, to defend the church in the name of Jesus defend every missionary God let your hand be upon every missionary preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ and God I pray you protect them protect the servicemen and the military protect those God trying to escape the tyranny of, of the Taliban I pray in Jesus name and God I pray you order this service in the Holy Ghost direct it tonight oh God order every part of it we pray and we lift up the name of Jesus in Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. you and pray the prayer of faith for you. If there's anyone that needs to be anointed. If not, we're going to pray. I'm going to ask Brother Norman to join me over here, and we're going to pray with this prayer cloth for Sister Robin's mom. So Brother Norman, if you would, let's pray. Lord, in your mighty name, Lord, we pray by your great power, Lord. There's nothing too hard for God. And I pray by the authority of the word, the power in your name, that God, this be a point of faith. Lord, let it be a point of healing. And let it be a point of deliverance, a point of revelation and understanding. In the name of Jesus, Lord, you do a mighty work for living. And God, we give you the praise. And we believe you, God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus.
Hallelujah. Praise your name, Jesus. Praise your name, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise God, praise God, praise God. Amen. Sister Lisa, I know you're having surgery this week, and we're praying for you. Would you take these prayer requests and pray over them this week? Kenzie will bring it over to you. And uh, you just take these prayer requests and pray over them. And uh, God is going to be with you through that surgery. God's hand is going to be upon you. You're going to be all right. You're going to be all right in Jesus' name. You're going to be all right in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. You may be seated. Ushers, ushers, would you come? Usher, would you come? Brother Brian, ask God's blessing on our worship and giving. Sister Gloria, it's so good to see you. Welcome. Thank you. We love you so much. Don't tell Brother Moss this, but I just count you as a regular. Don't you tell Brother Moss that. <laughs> Amen. Good to be in the presence of God, isn't it? There's a song that came out years ago. And now I'm like, we're not singing it. Uh, I just brought fear into the heart of the entire praise team. Um, and it says, friends are friends forever. When the Lord is Lord of them. Friend will not say never. And the welcome will not end. You all remember that song? It's a great song. It really is a great song. Well, it's very appropriate tonight. Because I'm getting ready to bring to this pulpit a friend. I don't, we can't figure out how long we've known each other. And we really can't figure out what brought us together. But we are friends. We will go a year or more and not talk. And then Brother, Brother Tim will call or I'll call or whatever and and all of a sudden, we're, we're just right where we were last time we talked. It's tremendous how God places friends in your life. And I have always appreciated the friendship of Brother Tim Norman, his dad. His dad has been here and sung for us. It's been quite a while, a couple, three, well, no longer than that, probably before my heart surgery, uh, probably six or seven years ago. 
And uh, so I want to bring him to this pulpit. He's come to minister to us tonight. I believe God's given him a word for us, uh, for this church, for you. And so would you stand tonight as I bring him up here? Maybe he'll, he'll share what God has taken him through over the past few years. I, I don't know how God's going to direct him. But however God directs him, receive the word. Amen? Receive the word. God bless you, Brother Norman. So glad you're here. Love you. Praise the Lord, everyone. Hallelujah. Yes, Brother Johnson is a dear friend. Like he said, it's amazing. Just like we just start, like we talk to each other every day. You know, it's amazing how God, he's so amazing. He is great and greatly to be praised. Amen. He's in this place tonight. He's here. You need a miracle. You have a problem, a situation. God is here to do exactly what he's promised. Amen. At this time, I'd like for my little girl to come up here and sing. Hallelujah. God loves the little children. Amen. He loves them. Amen. He loves every one of them. And tonight, she's, her and her mama, her mama wrote this song that she's going to sing. And she's got a CD that she's got out in the foyer that her and her mama's on. So she wanted me to let you all know. And I told her to tell you, but she was a little shy. So God bless it. Stand up and tell him you are built on solid ground. When those floods are coming, trying to drown your life, just reach up to God's rainbow and let him come inside. God's rainbow is shining so bright. God's rainbow, it lights up the night. Hallelujah. I'm glad he set me free. Amen. Hallelujah. He didn't have to, but he did. You know, he don't need us. We need him. And I want to be right by his side every day and every second that I can because I know he's great, great and greatly to be praised. Hallelujah. If you would tonight, turn with me into Psalms 136. 
reading at verse 23, and then we'll go into Luke chapter 23, verse 42 and 43. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Who remembered us in our low estate, for his mercy endureth forever. Hallelujah. Turn with me now into Luke chapter 23. And he said unto Jesus, Lord, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. And Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto thee, Today shalt thou be with me in paradise. Brother Johnston, would you pray? God, I ask you to come here tonight, Lord God, to lay hands on the word of God, Lord God. Thank you for coming, Lord God, to bless us with what we can have in this chapel. God, you are great, Father, and you will be praised. And God, we have a place to go, God, we have a place to live. And God, you are great, and you will bring us home to the glory. Amen. You may be seated. I just want to preach a little while on please remember me. We are looking here at a man on a cross that knew that he did wrong. He knew everything that he did that he should suffer for what he done. But he knew that there was a man that was beside him that he didn't know very well. But he knew that he was a man that God, his name was Jesus and he knew Jesus told them, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And he knew that there was something about this man named Jesus. He knew there was something, Brother Johnson, there was something that he had to have that Jesus had for his life. And Jesus, he said, Lord, God, please remember me, God. I know that I'm a sinner. God, I know that I've made mistakes. Lord, I know that I've fallen. But God, please remember me because, I, God, I know that there's something about you. I don't know much about you, but I know there's something there and God said son you thou going to be with me in paradise I thank God tonight that he reached down in my life and he began to move and direct and begin to say he never forgot me he said I'll never leave you nor forsake you he said I'll be with you from the beginning to the end of the world I'm talking about a God tonight that is able to set you free of what Whatever you're going through, whatever you're facing, God is able to see you through. He is able. You know, about a year ago, it's almost two years now, you know, I was in the coal mines. I, you know, every morning I went in that coal mines, I prayed every morning. You know what, church, I appreciate your prayers because if it wasn't for your prayers, I would not be where I am right now. I would be inside of a grave somewhere. I know that for a fact. But God, he remembered me when I was at my lowest state. I was down and out. What I'm coming to tell you tonight, if you feel like everything's going wrong in your life, if you feel like everything's closing in on you, God, he remembers you. God, as he said, I am a friend that sticks closer than a brother. He is right there. He is beside you. He is with you. He's guiding you. He's directing you. He is your provider. Whew, hallelujah. You know, that morning I went down in the mines. I prayed. I used to pray for my family. I prayed for everyone. I prayed for myself. In that day, you know, if I would have knew I was going to get hurt, I would have never went in that mines. I would have just said, called in and said, you know, I'm going to just stay home today. I just, I'm not going to come in today. But I went down there, Brother Johnson, I did my job. I did everything that I did every other day at that time. You know, I just had a different a piece of equipment the day that, that I was running that they just brought in that mine actually that morning. So I was the only one that knew how to run that piece of equipment. 
So they took us down underground. We started our job, and we were we were we were hauling out big, big rolls of belt, and we were hauling it out of the mines because they were closing that side of the mine off. And you know, we, every we were we were moving in and out, and the boss he didn't put the put the the chain on right when we were heading out. And what happened was a big roll of belt fell off of of the of the sled that I was pulling. So we were hauling it out, and the boss got off, and he got all upset because the roll of belt fell off. But he did, he didn't, you know, say that he was the one that that put it on there. You know, sometimes in our life that God is trying to tell us to do something, but it, sometimes we want to blame it on somebody else. But God is saying. No, I care for you. I, I love you. I, I, I need you. I want you in my life. I want everything about you. But that day, you know, he was all upset and he was all getting in a big hurry and, and everything. And then all of a sudden, I find myself being crushed in between two pieces of equipment. My life is there in front of me, Brother Johnson, and I know I'm going to die. I'm thinking, God, what am I going to do? I got two children. I got four kids. I got two my wife. God, I'm going to die. What, uh, you know, I wasn't scared to die, but I just didn't want to die because I didn't want to leave my family. And, you know, I was sitting there, and, and the piece of equipment that I was running, nobody else knew how to run it but me. So I ha here I am in pain, and all kinds, they, were, they just kept crushing the life out of me. And I said, I began to scream. As they heard me scream, they began to stop, and, and they come up there, and they said, how are we going to get this tractor off of him? We don't know how to get it off of him. So praise God that I didn't pass out because I had to tell the man how to get the tractor off of me. And, you know, God gave me the strength to be able to overcome and be able to make it through what I had to go through. Because, you know, I can remember when they brought me out of there and they put me on the gurney and we got to, we got to Marion Hospital. And I looked at my dad and I said, Dad, I said, I have no feeling in my lower legs. I said, I know I'm paralyzed. And I said, I can't feel my, uh, anything. And he said, he reached down and he said, in Jesus' name, I pray right now that feeling and life come back in this body inside of these legs and I want to tell you what in an instance God put filling back inside of me and God began to do a work like I've never seen before because he is great and greatly to be praised I'm telling you tonight I'm a standing walking miracle because God is able if you feel like today that God does not hear your prayer God God is there in the mention of his name. Because they took me over to Carbondale Hospital. After I got the feeling back in my legs, they took me into surgery and things went wrong and they put me on a ventilator. I was on a ventilator for five days. And you know what? In them five days, I died twice on the table. And one of those times, Brother Johnson... I was in the most beautiful place that I could ever imagine. It was a field full of beautiful flowers of lavender. And you know what the word lavender means? It means healing. It means purifying. So in that time, God was healing me and purifying me, and I didn't even realize it. And you know when I went and when I died, I was with a friend that, that died a long time ago. It was a pastor friend of mine. And me and him was running across that field as it was just amazing. And God, you could just feel the presence of God moving. And you know, I didn't I, and all of a sudden I come back to myself and they brought me back too. I didn't want to never leave that place. But you know what? There is a place, you know, by, the Bible says, eyes have not seen, ears have not heard neither has it entered into the heart of man you know what no I didn't see heaven but I seen a place that was beautiful but I'm telling you tonight Jesus is coming back for a bride that's made herself ready and God has prepared a place for you and I that we cannot contain what he has for you and I you know a few days later I was in the hospital for several days. My pelvis was crushed in six places. My main artery was cut. 
I got to the hospital, and they said, you shouldn't have lived. You should have bled out. But you know what? Every one of us has got a guardian angel that's with us every day. And I believe Brother Johnson, he grabbed a hold of that artery and held on to it until I got out of there because God was not done with me yet. And you're sitting in this place tonight because God is not done with you yet. We have got a, a world that is dying, that is falling apart, that people are hurting and they don't know what to do. But God is going to do a work. He said in the last days, he said, I'm going to pour my spirit upon all flesh. He's getting ready to do a work like we've never seen but so many times. Times we get to we we get to too caught up in ourselves, and God's saying, "Look beyond yourself and look at me, because your redemption is drawing nigh." God, please remember me. God, please don't never leave me. God, please don't never leave what you have for my life. You know, a few nights later. I was sitting there at home, and my wife, she, she burns these essential oils. And, you know, I said, honey, I said, what's that smell? I didn't even know what that purple stuff was when I first was in it. But I said, honey, what's that smell? She said, what are you talking about? Because I don't know if you know it or not, if you're sick and everything's going wrong, you, you, you put that lavender in your house, it begins to put stuff in your body where you can begin to feel better. You know, they used to use these things in the Bible back in the day when they didn't have medicine and all kinds of things. God put these things up on the earth to help us. So I begin to smell, because I believe in this last days, we're not going to be able to go to the doctor. We're not be able, going to be able to get the care that we need. We're going to have to trust on God and be able to use what God has placed in us and for us. That's why we got to have our minds set on what God is fixing to do because we're living in a time right now that this whole world could turn upside down in a matter of seconds. I mean, look over there in, in the Islamic in just a few days. Look what's happened. It's just turned over in an instance. Oh, we live in America. Everything's going to be all right. No, it's not. We've got to get ourselves ready because Jesus is getting ready. We've got to get everyone we can and take them with us because, the, my God, the, the, the hell is enlarging itself every day. And as my wife began to burn that stuff inside that diffuser she has, I said, honey, what's that smell? She said, that's lavender. I said, that's exactly what I smelled when I was running through that field. And it was a beautiful, I mean, it was so beautiful. I'm telling you, it was beautiful. But God was not done with me and God is not done with any of us in here tonight because if he was he would have already took us away he would have already took our you know took our lives he would already he would already said I'm done with you but he's not done yet He's got, a, he's, he's got a church to build. I'm telling you what, there's going to be a great church right here in Ravenswood. I'm telling you, God is going to do a work. I know this pastor right here has a vision. My Bible said without a vision, my people will perish. And I know this man of God right here, I know he prays over you every day. I know he seeks God and he gets God's will. And God is wanting to do a work like we've never seen. But God... God is wanting us to stand out by faith and stand up and say, Devil, get thee behind me because there's victory on its way. There's victory, victory, victory shall be mine. Oh, there's victory. There's hope. There's people going to be coming back. I see them coming right now. I see this place full. I see people getting set free. I see people getting filled with the Holy Ghost. I see God doing great miracles in Jesus' name. 
in Jesus' name. You know your flesh don't care where you go. Your flesh don't care where you go. Because it's not going to win. Your soul is what's going to go. You, we got to put that flesh under subjection. It tries to beat us up. It tries to knock us down. It tries to do everything it can trying to get our minds off of what God has to do and God's wanting to move. And, and we just say, no, I'm tired. I've had a rough week, Brother Johnston. I just can't make it. But God said, if you step out, if you step out by faith, he said, faith without works is dead. We've got to have the faith. He said, if you have the faith of a grain of a mustard seed, speak to that problem that you're going through. Stand up and say, I'm going to make it. I'm going to make it through. I might be depressed. I might have anxiety. I might have all these things coming against me. But for greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. I'm telling someone tonight that God is calling your name. God is reaching out. You know, Noah, he built that ark. They told him he was crazy. They said, what are you doing, old man? It ain't never rained. You know, that's what they're telling us. Why are you still going to that church? They've been saying Jesus is going to come back for 40, 50 years. Yeah, but honey, this Bible's being fulfilled. Everything that is going on, God is fulfilling it. If you ain't seeing it happen, you're not reading your Bible. Because it's all right here. It's all unfolding, and God is saying, I'm coming back. You know what, Brother Johnston? We have been having several prophesies at our church where God has been speaking, and we've heard it many times. He keeps saying, don't he, Sister Norman? He keeps saying, I'm coming back. I'm coming back very soon, and you all better get ready. We've got to get ready. Get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready. Jesus is coming and we've got to get people to go with us Noah poor old Noah you know we're living in the days Jesus said it's going to be like the days of Sodom and Gomorrah and we're living in it we're seeing it Noah they told him it ain't going to rain they laughed at him but I tell you what, the day the rain began to fall, things begin to change. Their eyes begin to open up. You know, and Noah was on the ark, and he smelled all them stinky animals. Could you imagine? All that mess he had to clean up every day. But you know what? He looked beyond the mess and saw freedom. Freedom. Jesus has gave us freedom. We've got freedom tonight to worship him. And poor people overseas right now, there ain't no telling. Uh, there's so much craziness going in their mind. And you know the devil's trying to, to tell them and get things all crazy. But they've got to stand up and stay firm. We've got to stand on that rock. we got to stand on that rock, Jesus. And we got to stand because it is firm and he is great. And all we've got to do is hang on and everything's going to be all right. We've got to just hang on and we're going to make it through because he promised he said I'll never leave you he ain't going to leave us he said I'll never forsake you he ain't going to forsake you he will be with you till the end of the world and I stand on his word I keep it he said hide that word in my heart where they might not where we might not sin against him we've got to stand on the word and keep it inside of us please Lord Please, Lord, remember me. I want to be like Daniel. I want to stay in prayer. He prayed three times a day. 
And I'd say he probably prayed more than that too. I don't know about you, but I guarantee all of us, I guarantee we pray all day long. I do. I pray and I want to know, Brother Johnston, that I want to be clean and pure and holy. The Bible says we got to be pure and holy and acceptable to God. I don't want to. I don't want anything to be in my in the way because I know when He comes back, I want to know my name is written in the Lamb's book of life. I want to know that I that I when He calls me home, I want to hear Him say, "Come on in," because I want Him to know my name. I want Him to remember me. God, remember me when we're in that day of judgment. God, please don't cast me away. God, bring me to You. Let my heart be clear and let my mind be on you. Hallelujah. You know, God has brought me through so much these last two years. I can't thank him enough. I've had 17 surgeries in two years and got probably four more to go. But I know God's going to see me through. My poor wife, she's been through it worse than I have. I've been through the pain, but she's had to go through all the rest. But I tell you what, when God, the Bible says when a man find a wife, he found a good thing. And God gave me a good one, amen. And God loves every one of us here tonight. God loves every one of us here, and he has got a plan for every one of us. You may stand to your feet tonight. God, my God. Oh, I feel the Lord in here. He cut a boko He is great and greatly to be praised. I tell you tonight, if you've got anything in your body, if you've got a sickness, if you've got a problem that you're facing. God is here tonight to take care of whatever you're going through. You ain't got to leave here the way you came. You ain't got to leave here with the this, this situation because the devil will try to talk you out of your blessing. You know, I've talked to so many people, and they said, man, Brother Norman, you are, you are so happy. I mean, you're cheerful at times because I'm not saying it hasn't been rough, but we've got to have joy. Joy unspeakable and full of glory. Because, yeah, I could have laid down. I could have quit. They told me I'd never walk again. But I looked at my wife on the second day after my pelvis surgery. I said, honey, I'm getting out of this bed. She said, you can't get out of that bed. I said, you watch and see. I'm getting out of this bed. I want to tell you what, if we get that kind of faith... And we stand in the devil's face and say, devil, get thee behind me. Because you have promised my children. You said, <laughs> you promised me everything because if I ask in your name it shall be done. Believe it. And I'm believing it. I'm believing my miracle. I'm believing for my family to be saved. I'm, play, I'm believing my children's going to be saved. I'm believing in Jesus' name because it's a promise. Uh, you said train, a, train up a child in the way they should go and they will not depart from it. Uh, I'm telling you tonight, uh, all we've got to do is step out by faith uh, and God will meet you uh, right where you're at uh, and God will fill you full of whatever you need. Just trust him. These altars are open to you tonight. God, please remember me. You know, we've heard some of the best preaching. We've heard some of the best singing. But God is wanting to go beyond that. Yes, it's great to be in this house. Yes, it's great to hear a great message. I'm not saying anything about that. But it goes beyond these four walls. He said, go to the highways and the byways. 
and appel them to come in. Reach out. Reach out. Because he's passing by. He's passing by tonight. Just reach out. Every head bow, every eye close. Just reach out. Because he loves you. He cares for you. Just praise him. Thank you. Sunday in Sunday school, I taught you a lesson.